What's up guys, Scoot here, and today we're back with another episode of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. Today's episode we're going to be taking on Black Diablos. Um, also, as you probably have noticed, I have unlocked my Argent Quest. Which is the Rathalos and Raytheon. Um, which I guess I get that that might be the first time to try and introduce them. It's like together, but even even with them together, I still don't think it makes sense for it to be after some of these monsters. Um, I think it'll either be in seven or five. I'm gonna check seven first. So Black Diablos is basically just regular Diablos, but, um, darker. Just doesn't even look that black, like, it's, it's more of like a dark gray color. At least in later games. Gravios is really, uh, Black Gravios is really, uh, black it's a really dark color um I actually don't know where this thing is maybe it's in two um I, I know the areas you can go to is, are uh, nine five two three and seven I don't think you can go to ten or four I don't see this thing. The balloon guy's right there. I'm gonna go ahead and wave to him. So it's in seven. All right. Uh, hopefully it doesn't leave. So yeah, um, fighting this thing's not going to be much different from fighting regular Diablos. I'm pretty sure this one is weaker to ice though, which is why I'm using the Blango Longsword. Well, I figure if it was here still it would have popped out by now. So I'm gonna guess that it went and left and is in five. The only thing is I don't know where it's gonna be in here to try and pop up at. Okay. Oh well yeah, in this game it is quite a bit darker and actually more black color. This one actually looks kind of big. Um, also, kind of weird that it's walking just in a straight line. So, I'm gonna say this again. Um, I really love Diablos' design, especially Black Diablos. It just it makes it look so much cooler than the regular version. Also probably still gonna bounce off of everything on it while it's in the ground. Which sucks. But, not anything I can really do about it. I only have spirit gauge now, so I'll just hit it with that a few times. Also, I hope this doesn't take too long. I 
So it's already enraged, it's a pretty good sign. I wish it would stop screaming though. Kinda sucks. Um I'm kinda hoping that it doesn't take a long time, but at the same time I don't think there's anything else I can do really to make this come out to a decent length and not be too long. So it's still in rage. So I can't knock it out of the ground with Sonic Bomb. At least I don't think so. That might just be a, like a newer game thing. Also, that would have hit me. I wouldn't have been like super surprised, but I would have been pretty disappointed. Also, just cut that Gin Prey in half, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't think I would ever actually be able to catch that on camera because it's basically you just you have to do enough damage to kill them in one hit, and just so I haven't hit him in midair. Maybe I've already done that on camera before, but. Don't remember. Also, I think it's not rage anymore. And of course, I get paralyzed, so that whole thing is just wasted. Also, still pretty annoying that I bounce off everything. Um, can't really do anything about it though. Like I said, I don't think there's any armor sets with Mind's Eye at this point. And uh, none of my weapons can be upgraded any further without needing like high rank stuff or Rathlos and Radiant stuff. And even the stuff that takes like grapples and radiant stuff doesn't get up to the next level of sharpness. So, I'm thinking it might be rage. No. Oh, well, I'll get some more damage off on it. That's always a good thing, I guess. Although I feel like since I would normally be bouncing off these parts, these aren't the most damaging parts on it. I'm pretty sure the most susceptible parts to damage are the tail stub, like once you cut the tail off, and I think like the neck. It's either gonna go after right here, it should go to where I was just standing, I'm not sure. Just in case I'm not. Yeah. Oh, before it's gonna leave the area. I don't think it's already weak. It's only. It's, it hasn't even been 10 minutes yet. I mean, if it is, that's cool. I might actually be able to take down Gravios in the same episode. But seeing as it's just sitting at the entrance, I don't think it's actually almost dead yet. I think it just left the area. I think it's still raged. It uh, went down kind of fast like it was. But, uh same time if it was angry I don't think it would have just been standing there. I don't see any smoke in its mouth so Oh man. I was really hoping I could like flinch it or something there. Are you serious again? And I missed again also which kinda sucks.
Yeah, like, third generation Diablos is way better than Freedom Unite Diablos. Honestly, the third generation games are, in my opinion, better anyways. Uh, at least 3 Ultimate is... Actually, probably Portable 3rd is the best. Um, cause like, I know a lot of people, like, basically say they don't like the games because they're too easy, and they are fairly easy. Um, I was actually able to solo all the way through the last, uh, G-Rank level in 3 Ultimate, and I only got about, I think I only got to G2 by myself in this game. Um, but the game is just better. Um, some of the mechanics are executed better. The weapons work better generally in that game. Hitboxes are tighter. Um, they've improved AI on monsters, so yeah. Honestly, I think the people who say Freedom Unite is better are mostly just clouded by nostalgia. Um, I do like some of the monsters in these games better than some of the ones in 3 Ultimate, but... A lot of the monsters in this game are basically just reskins of other monsters. Like, Monoblos is just Diablos, basically, or vice versa. Um, except Monoblos, you can't even fight online like with other people. So there's no G-Rank Monoblos. And then Lunastra is also just Teostra but blue. And of course both games have subspecies in them, so they both uh, kind of inflate their monster list with uh, subspecies. Like, even, because, like, let's see here, um, Fatalis is in this game and not in the, it's, ba basically its counterpart is Dire Morales, and, honestly, I think Fatalis and Dire Morales fights are basically exactly the same, from what I remember. It's like, I think even Crimson Fatalis in this game will summon... Meteors. It might only be in 4 Ultimate. I know that the White, uh, white Fatalis will summon Lightning. So. And they basically have the same moves. Like, they'll have. Uh, they'll, like, claw at the ground. And then the Dragon Rush. It's just the Diamond Ralts also has an underwater bit. So it's, it's a little bit. It's got a little bit more to it than just what Fatalis is. Um, then Jin Moran is basically just a big punching bag. But so is Yamatsukami. Yamatsukami's fight, it's alright. Um, although I, I guess the more comparable like comparison uh, between Honor Dragons would be Lao Shan to Jin Moran. Which, I like Jin Warren's fight more than I like Lao Shan's fight. Um, Generations, though, is probably my favorite game. I just, I like, I just, I, my only issue with Generations is that most of the time it feels like I'm using Adept Dual Blades because they really are just so good and there's not really a point to use anything else. And they're still fun too, so like, it, really there's no incentive to use something else. It's not like they're a boring weapon to use and so, you know, I, We'll switch it up sometimes. I switch it up sometimes anyways just because it does get boring doing the same thing every single time. But, uh...
but basically anytime that I, I need to do something and it's like oh uh, I feel like I like I want to do it a decent amount of time I will use it at dual blades and uh in four ultimate I felt like I could use each weapon type like and be almost as effective as the others I know that charge blade was pretty powerful but um, I didn't ever actually use charge blade a, a whole lot like I, I had a charge blade set for the with artillery I think it was the desert salt set that I used um, but I still didn't use it that much because I didn't really have a, a good charge blade I think the, my best charge blade was the desert rose which was a really good charge blade it had an impact file and it had a pretty decent raw damage and paralysis on it. Um, solo though, I did mostly use Insect Glaive, I think. Just because it, it basically got, it like, mounts were pretty good in that game. And especially against like monsters that were really like susceptible to mounts. Alright, so that's Black Diablos. Um, that's gonna be it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.